So did you know that you can play Sony PlayStation 1 games on the Apple Silicon Mac using an emulator called DuckStation? And this is going to allow you to play games like Tomb Raider, the original one on PlayStation 1, and other games too, just like Street Fighter Alpha 3. So in this video today, what I'm going to do is show you how to get DuckStation installed on an Apple Silicon Mac, how to do things like set up the BIOS, set up the graphics settings, how to pair a Bluetooth controller, and get PS1 games on a Mac working as well as possible on Apple Silicon hardware. So what we're going to do is go to the duckstation.org website which I'll leave a link to in the description and then we'll go to the home section here and we're going to notice that we don't have a Mac download button but we have this button here which says other platforms and we'll be taken to this github page where the latest rolling releases are going to be listed so just go ahead and scroll down here and we're going to download the latest one at the time of recording which was released five days ago and we're going to click on duckstation-mac-release and it's going to go into our downloads folder so next what we're going to do is go to finder click on the downloads button and then we're going to go and extract DuckStation Mac release. Now we have DuckStation extracted, we're going to drag and drop this into the applications folder and then within applications we're going to double click on DuckStation. If we have an issue opening it we're going to hold down the control key and then click on DuckStation and press open and this is going to allow us to manually open the software. So now we're going to go through the setup wizard for DuckStation, just press next here and here it's asking us to set up a BIOS. So we need the BIOS files in order for PlayStation 1 emulation to work. What we're going to do is click on open in Explorer and this is where we need to deposit our BIOS files. So you need to extract this from a PlayStation 1 or you can find this quite easily if you just type in PS1 BIOS into Google. I'm going to copy and paste my files into here. They are called scph5502.bin, 5501 and 5500. And once that's done we're going to go ahead and press next and now we need to add our PlayStation 1 ISO directory. So I'm not going to tell you where to download games from exactly but they basically need to be in ISO or any of these disk image formats in order to work. So I'm going to add my directory of games here, press open. Here it's asking us to want to search recursively, press yes, and then I'm going to press next. Next we're going to set up our controller. So under Bluetooth settings on the macOS side. So this is a PlayStation 5 DualSense controller. Each controller is going to be pairing slightly differently on a Mac. However, to put this into pairing mode, we just hold down this button here and then hold down the home button until this starts to flash. So you can see the LED here has started to flash here. And then on the Mac side, you can see here, there is a DualSense wireless controller appearing under nearby devices. Press the connect button. And this is now connected up. You can see here that the DualSense LED has turned a solid blue light. So that means it's all paired up and ready to go. So that's what we're gonna be using to play games here. So it's saying here, control has been mapped to the keyboard, but I'm actually gonna click on automatic mapping and then select my DualSense wireless controller. And then it's gonna be all mapped to that controller. So press next. Now it's saying setup is complete, press finish. So now this is search the directory for my games. This can be displayed as a list like this or you can put this in a grid format. So if you want to get covers to display correctly, one what we can do is download a bunch of covers. So what I'm going to do is to leave a link in the description for this GitHub page and uh, what you need to do is to go to this page here which is called psx-covers and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find the raw URL for covers to be downloaded from this GitHub page. So I'm going to copy this and then we're going to go back into DuckStation and then we're going to go and click on tools cover downloader. I'm going to paste that code that we just entered and press start. It's going to download all of the game covers depending on how many that you have. It's going to take a bit of time and then once that's done we can press close and you can see all of these beautiful game covers are now listed. So if I make this a bit bigger you can see that this is looking rather nice. So one more thing I'll do is change some of the display settings. So by default you can change the global settings for games. What we should do is go into DuckStation settings, go to enhancements and then change the resolution scale internally. Ideally, most of these games should run fine on any Apple Silicon Mac. At least five times the resolution is going to be ideal. I'm happy putting that as a global setting. Also, some games will support widescreen hacks, so I'm going to enable those. Also, within display, I'm going to change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9. And a couple more things which are worth doing. Achievements can be enabled. If you have a retro achievements account, then you should use this to log into that account here. Then you're going to get access to retro achievements. Another cool thing is that you should enable geometry correction. So that's going to stop some of the jitteriness for a lot of 3D games. For example, Tomb Raider is vastly improved by having geometry correction turned on. So basically, once that's all enabled, we can go ahead and play a game. Let's try Tomb Raider. So you can see here the PlayStation is now booting up and we're now into Tomb Raider. So this is all working great on the Apple Silicon Mac using DuckStation. 
We can also try other games, for example, this is Street Fighter Alpha 3 working great on PS1 on the Mac. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.